Hello, hello. Thank you, everyone, for filtering in. This is Transcend's Consent Management Platform demo uh, that we'll be presenting today. We'll have both myself uh, speaking and just teeing up primarily Allison to do the uh, majority of the presentation, which will be focused around the Transcend uh, platform as it relates to consent management. Um, Allison is a senior sales engineer here at Transcend, and I'm part of the marketing team. Before we get started into the bulk, uh, the bulk of the consent management platform, um, I also want to cover a little bit of us, uh, an additional feature that Transcend has available to ensure that you're actually able to get an accurate state of what's happening on your site uh, via web auditor. Um, that product is actually avail uh, available and used by many of our customers today, but we currently have a, a special offer for you to get a free web audit so that you can understand all the activity that's happening on your website. Um, just make sure to type in the chat that uh, you're interested in this offer. Um, to help tee you up to run a successful consent management uh, program. And uh, we will reach out to you with next steps. And um, like I mentioned today, the product demo will take the majority of the time, but we'll also be teeing it up by outlining a few of the benefits of consent, why it matters in the context of state laws, uh, and how it might differ from um, your current or uh, traditional approaches that you've used in the past. And with that, I will pass it off to Allison uh, to, to go over what a few customers mentioned about the benefits of consent to them. Thanks so much, Brandon. So starting off with the basics, consent management, um, for those of you who might be new um, or not just a refresher, is the process of capturing, managing, and enforcing user consent preferences across various digital interfaces, such as websites or mobile applications. Um, and it really ensures organizations comply with data privacy laws by respecting user choices regarding the collection, use, and sharing of their personal data. But uh, consent is much more than simply adhering to regulations. So with the right consent management practices and technologies, Privacy and privacy focused teams can become profit centers that it will be able to enable increased customer trust, better operational efficiency, reduced risk to the business, a more privacy conscious brand image, faster business system onboarding and easy expansion into new regions. So today we're going to start um, walking th you through just how this can be done. But first, I'm going to pass it back to Brandon just to set the stage with some of the latest states laws and regulations. Thank you. And it's hard to keep on top of all the state laws. We're currently going through this time where um, US states are uh, expanding their privacy laws uh, to more easily protect user rights, which is definitely a good thing, but makes it tough for us to stay on top of uh, all the minute differences they have when enacting those state laws, when implementing them, keeping on top of timelines. And just to uh, set the scene for um, how it matters in the context of the two most recent state laws that went into effect at the beginning of this month, uh, we'll be covering Texas and Oregon, and we'll be starting with Oregon. So uh, as I mentioned before, both of these state laws that we'll be covering uh, went into effect at the beginning of July, so just a few short days ago. And um, one of the areas that we'll cover is, of course, does this law apply to me? Does it apply to my business? And with the Oregon uh, Consumer Data Privacy Act, there is a pretty low threshold for which companies this applies to, and I'd guess that it applies to most companies that you've either uh, work for or currently at, um, because the uh, law, the co companies that this law applies to is anyone that's controlling or processing uh, data for 100K plus consumers, or if you're selling personal data, 25K plus consumers. And this also applies to nonprofits too, which is a small call out because some other states will exclude them from um, their uh, privacy acts. And uh, the definition of sensitive and personal data differs from state, state to state as well. Um, some specific call outs for Oregon is that the definition of sensitive data will also include whether you're the status of the victim of a crime, um, as well as your gender identity. And if a user does choose to revoke access to the use of the data um, for the Oregon, for uh, companies operating in Oregon, where the user has requested that from Oregon, they'll need to uh, process that revocation within 15 days. And um, when we're talking about opt-outs here, we're talking about uh, whether a user chooses to opt out of usage of the data in any sense. Um, and the reason we call it out here as being in effect is because for some other states, uh, once the law actually goes into effect, it doesn't necessarily mean you need to honor user opt-outs right away, but in the case of Oregon, you do. Um, whereas in the case of uh, Texas, we're starting a bottom up here from the bullet point, the opt-out timeline is a little bit different. 
you won't need to honor the user opt-outs until the beginning of next year, uh, January 2025. Um, and then going back through the different uh, well, uh, different categories of entry before, does this law apply to your business? In the case of the Texas Data Privacy Security Act, it's even a little bit broader. Um, so there's not necessarily a uh, tie to the number of consumers' data uh, that you're processing, um, nor is there a tie to, for example, uh, the revenue you're generating. It just applies to, broadly applies to most businesses who work in the state, with the exception of small businesses, as defined by the U.S. Small Business Administration. And slight difference here for personal data, too. Uh, the definition of personal data here will also include biometric data. And uh, for those companies that are selling sensitive personal data, you'll have to put a pretty big, broad notice on the website, um, alerting users to the fact that you are selling the, uh, their personal data. And uh, as I mentioned again, the opt-outs again, recovery just for the sake of uh, comprehensiveness, uh, you'll have to honor user opt-outs uh, by January 2025. And that's a little bit of uh, the state laws that recently passed, but of course there were others that were uh, passed this year as well, and a few others that are currently still pending, making it a little bit hard to again keep on top of all these different state regulations and make sure that the uh, consent management program that uh, you're running is actually covering all the small differences uh, for all the users there, so you can continue to do business there and continue to support that healthy revenue growth. And uh, consent management Transcend Consent Management will help you minimize that manual work for the team, help you improve visibility um, into everything that's worked on your site, and increase user consent to data so you can support more comprehensive compliance. And I'll pass it off to Allison again to uh, talk about how you can do that. Yeah, thank you for setting the stage there. So I'm going to get into, you know, how we can configure Transcend specifically to help handle all of these nuances across the different states and states regulations. But I want to kind of set the stage with a little bit of the challenge that businesses are facing today. Um, so Brandon just took us through some of those recent examples of states regulations, but there are at least 13 states that have new regulations that are either already in effect or coming into effect uh, over the next couple of years. And regulators are drafting increasingly technical and specific requirements for how businesses need to manage their data practices. And Brandon only touched on a handful of bullet points. Um, so, you know, making sure you're understanding the nuances of each is, is really important. Um, so, for example, let's take the CPRA, California's latest regulation, which clarifies that opt outs also apply to data sharing for the purpose of targeted advertising. This basically closes the loophole and it makes it clear that the vast majority of businesses, which is really anyone doing modern advertising, need to comply. Uh, compounding on that is the proliferation of ad tech. Um, so by our count, there's over 200 different types of commonly used web trackers that function in distinct ways that need to be properly regulated for compliance um, to make sure that you're adhering to modern privacy laws. So this is a huge engineering lift and homegrown sort of patchwork solutions or rudimentary cookie scripts just don't really cut it anymore. Um, so it's not surprising that only 4% of tech leaders say that they have the in-house resources to build and maintain this compliance um, sort of on their own. Um, but the consequences, as I'm sure many of you know, um, of not being compliant are only becoming more and more clear um, and more and more strict for that matter. So as you might've seen, the California AG recently sent hundreds of CCPA enforcement letters to businesses found to not be complying with the do not sell or share requirements of the law. Um, so, and then also they've settled with Sephora for $1.2 million over allegations that they were actually failing to properly process user requests in order to opt out of the sale of information. So, um, these are some challenges you may or may not be familiar with, but I want to kind of now talk about how Transcend can help. Um, so when we built our consent management tool, we were not the first tool on the market. Um, and we did this specifically because we didn't want to build just another cookie consent tool. Um, we wanted to build something that was better. So as I mentioned before, there's over 200 different trackers and ways that data can actually leave a device. And cookies are really just one of those vehicles. So beyond cookies, there's Fetch, CSS, XHR, Pixel, all sorts of different methods throughout the browser. Um, and Transcend, using our proprietary AirGap technology, is able to regulate all 200 plus of those at the network level, which allows for just a drop-in script that is able to, one, detect everything on the website without you having to define user stories, and two, regulate all of that data at the network level without having to bring in engineering resources for special cases over time or for new trackers that you discover over time. So Transcend isn't relying on 
blunt tools like script regulation that leave your site sort of broken or slow. Um, we let the scripts and the tools that your site relies on load as normal and instead focus our regulation only on the packets that contain data for which consent is required. So the example I like to give is for an embedded video player like Vimeo or a chat tool like Intercom. These are core site functionality, but they might also emit some data that may require consent under certain regimes, like analytics information, for example. Um, so what we're able to do is allow the core functionality to continue, but identify and suppress the packets containing analytics data until that consent is obtained. Um, now I'm gonna show you how this works in the product, but a couple of just key differentiators um, before I jump in. So a couple of main differentiators to start are our advanced detection and no manual tag management. So because Transcend is working at this network level, we're able to report back telemetry of real users using the site. So this is gonna give you an incredibly strong picture of all the tech on your site. Um, it doesn't matter if that tech is coming through from like the marketing team and a tag manager or the engineering team importing an SDK, which imports another SDK and so on, um, or some third party tool. Um, everything can be detected on the website that flows into a centralized dashboard, which I'm gonna show you. Um, and other tools that rely on manual tag management are just doing these static site scans that occur, you know, maybe once a month, once a quarter, whatever it is. And so it's easy to fall out of compliance really quickly. Um, manual tag management tools also require you to encode user stories, which are often missing a lot of key components, um, things like A-B tests or going through a login flow. Um, you'd have to encode all of those workflows from scratch versus with Transcend, your users are really using the site um, and battle testing all of the different corner cases, which reports back to you for really easy maintenance. So in other words, you're not having to guess how your users use the site. Transcend is actually getting real-time information. Now, this also allows for some other benefits such as omni-channel consent, um, meaning we can maintain user consent across different domains and pages of your website, um, which is important because uh, California and the GDPR both require companies to remember consent preferences. Um, so Transcend really enables you to remain in compliance and kind of majorly reduce the risk to your business. Um, and then finally, we have the ability to persist and restore consent from a database, whether it's Transcend's database or bring your own if you prefer, which is our full stack approach. Um, so we have web SDKs, iOS, Android SDKs. We have APIs for your backend. We have a database for your backend. Um, and then we also have over 200 API integrations to make server to server API calls in order to opt out users or delete data across your marketing stack downstream, um, which we will likely get deeper into in a future webinar. So make sure to uh, follow us on LinkedIn for that. Um, but let's stop talking about it and see it in action. Okay, so diving in, implementation typically starts with adding this HTML snippet for air gap to the header of your website. And it's gonna start in reporting only mode, meaning that it's not gonna regulate or show any banners just yet. It's just going to listen to the interactions with the site and then report back that telemetry to discover the tech that's on your site. So the benefit being here, what we just talked about of not having a huge lift in implementation, needing to encode user stories first and then rely on these static site scans, it's actually reporting back the actual data flows. Um, so all of that new tech is going to flow into either the data flows triage or cookies triage sections. Um, and that is where you'll be able to see the service that's making the request, the different domains requested, the data flow type, the purpose, and how active or how many requests that service is making, um, which will order from most frequent to least frequent, which sort of helps um, in terms of identifying risk. So oftentimes, you know, if there is more activity from a certain service, it might be considered more risky. I mean, you might wanna put stricter regulations around it versus the ones that aren't firing all that much. Um, now, as far as purposes go, um, we have a library of over 2,500 different tools where we've mapped these requests and cookies back to the services and pre-labeled those with purposes. Um, specifically, we've labeled them with advertising, analytics, functional, essential, and sale of personal information. Um, so those are kind of our out-of-the-box purposes. But you can also create your own purposes as well. So if you know that you use a certain system in a different way, you can change the, the purposes as well. So it's all very customizable. We're also going to display a variety of other metadata. So things like 
description or website URL, um, a couple of other tags associated with the vendor of the service. Um, and then you can approve these or, you know, mark them as junk. And once they get approved in order to, uh, you know, have some regulations start getting into place, they will flow into this approved tab here. So um, the top few examples here, once this loads up, are some specific regulations. Um, so for example, pretty much all of google.com is analytics or advertising. But if you use reCAPTCHA, um, reCAPTCHA endpoint, that one endpoint is really pretty essential to the site. So if we detect reCAPTCHA, for example, we're going to suggest these really precise rules that are optimized for popular tools in order to maximize advertising analytics compared to essential functionalities. But um, you can, of course, see that you know other systems here will will show the activity and all of the the information that is approved from the triage. We then have regional experiences. So the regional experiences configuration is where you can set what type of consent is going to happen in various locations. So out of the box, we're gonna have a bunch of predefined experiences that we recommend, um, but we do allow for this to be customized since we're often seeing uh, different customers take sort of different risk reward approaches here. Um, so for example, I may wanna treat all of the United States as I would treat California because I find that less risky, or I wanna make specific rules for specific states or even regions within the EU, um, anywhere sort of across the world you can configure. Um, and this mapping is typically based on IP address. Um, that's the most popular. That being said, you can also um, have language and time zone, so browser language or time zone come into play. Um, so for example, language might come might be helpful to you if somebody is um, you know EU based, but they're traveling, um, but their browser language is in it is in you know German, let's say, for example. So that might be helpful to you as well. Um, but it's really flexible to show different UIs in different places. And you can actually show what the user has the option to opt in or out of in that place, uh, or whether it's just totally hidden. So you don't necessarily need to have a pop-up banner. Um, obviously, in the EU, you would. But um, in the US, you don't necessarily need it. So you can choose accept all, reject all, what types of um, consent that you want them to be able to uh, make preferences on. And then uh, a good example of this is actually the EU. So you have to collect opt-in consent or in certain places in the US, you can assume that people are opt-in, which is really great for optimizing the marketing team. So um, you could take you know, the GDPR and apply it globally, but then you're gonna lose half of your data. So a lot of flexibility here to sort of configure these flows um, as you need. Now the purposes tab here, um, so I mentioned those handful of purposes that come out of the box, but this is also where you can add your own custom purposes. Um, and then you can create sort of different types of consent that are more customized to your business. So for example, um, we've seen, you know, we have the standard ones of sale of personal information, essential functional analytics, but we've also seen customers create custom ones that are like, um, do not train on my data, um, things like that. So you can really customize this however you need, or maybe you know opt out of automated decision making. Um, so uh, finally, you can map these many different types of consent to different privacy signals. So for example, do not sell or share can be mapped to the GPC signal, which is basically the do not sell my, my data signal that the California government has started to create really large fines around. Um, so some people map to the DNT signal as well, which is like the do not track in Chrome. Um, but we will detect these signals. And even if the user was opted in by default, if they show these signals um, and you've enabled them for certain purposes, they'll instantly be opted out. And all of that tech is going to be blocked from the first time that they're on the website, as well as across domains and different pages um, as they as they kind of click around and visit your site. So we are coming up on time. This has really been just a basic overview of elements for Transcend for web consent. Um, we hope that you'll join us in our next sessions for diving really deeper into these workflows, as well as getting into our full stack offering across um, you know, your mobile applications. Feel free to reach out. Um, we are happy to show you a demo in more, in more detail, um, work with you for your specific kind of workflows, um, and we're happy to chat. So always feel free to reach out. And then, of course, follow us on LinkedIn so that you can join the next, uh, the next in the series of this consent management webinar series.
Yeah, thank you so much, Allison. Um, I think we can, I think so, there are some maybe frequently asked questions that we can address. Um, some of them being, uh, for example, how do you, how does Transcend Consent Management classify cookies uh, for data flows? Oh yeah, absolutely. So I didn't really jump into cookies very much. So the cookies flow works um, very similarly to the data flows flow, which is that once cookies are detected, um, they will flow into this triage tab where again, you can see kind of all the sorts of different details around that. Um, and then in terms of uh, approving them, they would also live in that approved section as well. So that is kind of the, the flow in the demo there. But, uh, you know, I, I was, apologies, I missed that one <laughs> in terms of the flow. It's just very similar to data flows uh, in terms of in terms of the actual product demo of it all. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And thanks for covering that too. Um, I think it's super useful to see how the uh, cookies data flows get auto categorized um, and then staged for triage uh, until your team figures out what to do with them uh, or even stored in that junk tab uh, if you do decide that you want to track it later. Um, and I think that's probably our most frequently asked question, uh, being able to uh, figure out like how does the classification work? How does the approval process work? Um, but other than that, uh, like Allison mentioned, um, if you do have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to us uh, either on LinkedIn, uh, either through DMing. I think now you can DM the company page too, in addition to our profiles. Um, but I also wanna make a quick call out again to the web audit that I mentioned at the beginning. So um, at the, to understand what's, uh, to understand how to implement consent, I uh, need to start with understanding what's happening on your website. So uh, we do have an offer right now for a free compliance audit. Um, just, I think, reach out to us if you have any questions about what that is. But uh, if you are interested, I can make sure that I get that audit to you if you just type in the chat uh, that you're interested. And I'll take note of who commented so that we can make sure that we get you set up with the proper free audit. Other than that, thank you, everyone, um, again, for dialing in, for <laughs> video chatting in and sticking around till the end of the webinar. We really appreciate you being here. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Other than that, have a good rest of your day. And thank, thank you, you, Allison. Sir.